This is the first Mega Minx produced by Garn. It comes with all the great innovation and design we've come to expect from that company, and a price tag to match. So with other Mega Minxes at a fraction of the cost of this one, is the Garn's offering worth getting? Spoiler alert, it's a bit hard to say. The Garn Mega Minx comes beautifully packaged, like all Garn cubes. It comes in a plastic orb that itself has a geometric quality, specifically a truncated icosahedron with 32 sides, like a soccer ball, except each pentagon and hexagon is fragmented, so it's more like 240 sides. Sorry, I like maths. In a little box is a random credit card, three sets of different nuts to adjust tensions, and a nice black pouch, which annoyingly does not fit the orb. I try not to think about how much I'm paying just for these accessories. First impressions? The puzzle has a matte finish, which was surprising. It reminded me of the Garn 249, which I was never a huge fan of. But the next thing I noticed? This puzzle is light. So light. Check out this comparison. My first Mega Minx, the T T Heng S. My second, the YJ MGC Magnetic Mega Minx. But the Garn comes in at a crazy 115 grams. That's even lighter than the Garn 4x4. In addition to that, this thing is tiny. Speed cubers can distinguish between puzzles just one millimeter different in size. This one is nearly three millimeters smaller than its counterparts. Internally, this is very clearly a Garn product, down to the honeycomb textures and shape of each component. The pieces look almost identical to those of the Garn 356X. There are a lot of magnets in this thing, and Garn opts for a visible yellow, reminiscent of the middle layer magnets on the 4x4. Corner cutting is really nice, even at a 45 degree angle although my YJMGC could often do the same. Instead of ridges, which nearly every other good Mega Minx has, Garn went for subtle indentations, just on the corner pieces. It makes for a gorgeous look, but does it actually work? Well, it was time for a solve. Hear that? Yep, it's that quiet. Turns are quick, maybe because each side is shorter, and things just snap into place. These magnets are strong, and there are five of them clicking into place with every turn. The bottom line is, combined with the smaller size and weight, the Garn Mega Minx simply feels different. Like, really different. But is it a good different or a bad different? The truth is, it took me a while to figure that one out. My main challenge was keeping a good grip on this Mega Minx. The smoother surface, smaller size, and lack of ridges meant that I had to work a lot harder at holding onto the puzzle. But then I realized this was a new problem because I usually don't even hold the Mega Minx. Here comes a confession. I've only ever solved the Mega Minx on the mat. Yet because the gun was so light, I could easily hold it for the entire duration of the solve, which is fairly long because I'm a noob. So was the grip problem due to the puzzle or my inexperience? Maybe both. But whatever the case, the world's best solvers hold the cube, so this is forcing me to take a step in the right direction. The other thing I found hard to get used to was the color scheme and the matte shades. I really wish the pink and light green were brighter, and that the grey was darker. I also wish Garn had gone for black internals, like they did with their flagship 3 and 4, because of the subtle definition it provides each piece. Am I nitpicking? Maybe. But you have to expect the best from a premium product. But there were positives too. The wider edge pieces meant that I could spot them that bit quicker in solves. The lack of ridges made me feel like I could see adjacent colors a little bit easier. And not once did I get a corner twist, a problem I often had with the YJMGC. Overall, the Garn Mega Minx is an extremely stable puzzle. And those little indentations on each corner piece, well, they sort of worked. But perhaps the most relevant question of all is, did my times improve? Initially, no. But after a day, yes, slightly. Enough for me to break my PB with it. The truth is, I don't practice Mega Minx a lot. Yet, after every solve with the Garn, I just wanted to scramble it and go again. And that wasn't a feeling I've had with other Mega Minxes. There was something about it that was more comfortable in my hands, more rewarding to solve. It's hard to put my finger on it. It seemed just a bit more fun. Okay, let's wrap it up. At 79 Australian dollars, the Garn Mega Minx is by far the most expensive one on the market right now. So should you buy it? Well, yes and no. I think you should stay away from this cube if you're not serious about Mega Minx, if you're happy with your current Mega Minx, if there's another expensive cube you're saving up for, or if you have big hands, and I'm being serious. But if you do take Mega Minx seriously or want to get into it more, or if you're a huge Garn fan with money to spend, or if you've been wanting a smaller and lighter Mega Minx that's stable and built to last, then I think this is the cube you've been waiting for. 
The Garn Mega Minx is a premium puzzle, both in quality and price, and will be an investment that requires consideration. But for me, it's made solving the Mega Minx fun and addictive again, and perhaps that alone is reason enough. Thank you so much for watching this review, and also to Daily Puzzles for making this video possible. If you'd like to support what I do, please consider subscribing, as well as shopping at Daily Puzzles using the link in the description below. Entering the code TINGMAN at the checkout will also give you 10% off your entire order. Till next time.